Thank you for joining. In the previous lessons, we implemented crude action methods such as get, post, and put. In this lesson, we will finalize crude operations by implementing the delete request. As I promised a few lessons ago, the topic for the upcoming lesson will be assigned to explicit model binding and attributes such as from body and from route. Let's copy and paste the boilerplate for the delete method. You can copy any previous method, whether synchronous or asynchronous. I will also keep some methods synchronous intentionally to provide various examples of asynchronous methods with exception handling and methods without it, to help you understand the difference between both and other practices. I will copy the put method, which is asynchronous and has required exception handling implemented. I'll change the attribute to delete and rename it to delete by ID. Since the method's logic doesn't require a request body, we can remove this part. The ID of the item to be removed from the database is obtained from the ID property, so the from route attribute remains in place. The variable solar system single for finding the item in the database using ID will also stay, along with the if check. Since we don't have dynamic assignments, the part associated with the from body parameter can be omitted. To delete data in the current method delete implementation, we will need to use an additional method provided by Entity Framework, which is remove. Following the same pattern, we access the Solar Systems model from the injected HiKaiTopDB context class and then call the remove method with the Solar System single variable. Please note that there is no asynchronous version for the delete method. This method deals with deletion, so we can remove this part in the code. The return method will only return a message, confirming deletion since we wouldn't return the deleted entity, as it's no longer present in the database. Therefore, the data object and associated variable names can be removed. We will keep both catch blocks in place. If we open Swagger, we will see the delete method highlighted in red. Let's retrieve the database content. I will copy the existing item GUID and paste it into the delete method parameters. We will execute it and receive a correct response. If we retrieve all records again using the getAll method, we will see that alpha centauri is no longer present. This completes the crude part of the Solar Systems Controller API. The method includes exception handling for the potential errors and responds with appropriate status codes and error messages in case of any exceptions. Now we have few methods without asynchronous operations and with asynchronous operations implemented. Methods with the asynchronous approach, along with exception handling using trackage blocks such as put and delete, follow best practices. I'll keep both versions as examples of the code to avoid and the code style you should follow. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!